C.S. Lewis was a prominent theologian in the early 19th century. Though currently more well known for his Chronicles of Narnia series, C.S. Lewis has been held in high regard for his Christian literature. He used an analogy in one of his books that's stuck with me, and I'll paraphrase the analogy for you. Imagine that you are a dog on the beach of Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. And all of a sudden you get hit by a piece of shrapnel. It slices your leg off. Now the dog has no idea that on the other side of the world, Japan has just issued a major attack on Pearl Harbor. And on the other, the United States is on the brink of their entry into the Second World War. The only thing the dog knows is, is one minute he's minding his own business, and the next he gets hit by a piece of shrapnel. Now we've all been hit by a piece of shrapnel in one way or another at some time or another. And yes, like the dog, our vision is often narrow, and we don't readily see the much bigger picture. So what is the much bigger picture? In the eyes of the Christian faith, the story can be best understood when we look back to the beginning of creation and the fall of man. God created the whole world and everything in it. Oceans, and trees, plants, and animals, and his prized creation, man and woman. He created us to live with him in this new and earthly paradise. He created us in his image. This new and wonderful creation only had one stipulation. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Simple enough? Well, maybe not so simple. The fallen angel Lucifer in his raging envy seeks to destroy God's latest creation. The devil tempts man to eat the forbidden fruit. He says, you won't die from eating the fruit but you'll be like God. Now, Adam and Eve know what God has commanded. After all, he told them, for in the day that you eat of the fruit, you shall die. He gave them fair warning. So what do they do? the devil is a liar and God was right. Life for Adam and Eve and the rest of humanity is forever changed. Now what's interesting is the major consequences of the fall and the stark contrast of life before the fall and after. What was once beautiful and full of life now suffers in the absence of its life source. Darkness and death have nestled their way into God's work of art. Labor pains for ladies are only the beginning of our new and fallen state. Aging, suffering, tendency to sin, ignorance, and ultimately death enter into the human condition. So it's enough to swallow that the consequences of our first parents' actions have led to a dramatically dysfunctional human condition. Much less talk about redemption. Fortunately, anytime you're talking about God, there's good news. God is love, God is patient, God is kind, and God is not easily angered. The good news is that despite the fact that we have separated ourselves from God, He has at every moment in time stretched out his hands to redeem us. If we start from the beginning and fast forward through time, we see a God who comes to us with a reckless abandonment, passionate beyond all understanding, to draw us back to himself. From the law and the prophets to the Torah and the temple, we finally come to the height and peak of God's effort 
to bring us back to himself. Now this is the part that blows me away. It's God himself who comes in the form of a man, Jesus Christ. God the almighty and powerful creator steps into the chaos of this dysfunctional world. He comes in an effort to redeem us, to sanctify us, and draw us back to himself. In return, Jesus experiences the fullness of the darkness of the human condition to his own passion and crucifixion. As strange it is, as it is that God would suffer at the hands of his own creation, even more strange that he would make it the means of our redemption. In and through Christ, we are brought back to union with God. In and through Christ, we can experience the fullness of life and joy and love that he intended for us in the beginning. When we unite ourselves to the life of Christ, he gives us the gift of himself as a paraclete that we might overcome our dysfunction and make new a fallen world. God has always wanted us to experience his endless love, his compassion, and his generosity. We are hardwired for God. As St. Augustine says, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. C.S. Lewis is right. There is a much bigger picture unfolding. The story is cosmic. And perhaps even our greatest vision is but a pixel in the painting. Thank you.